Praise the Lord, everybody. How you doing this Wednesday afternoon? This is Pastor James Fowl from the Pentecostals of El Dorado, and this is our weekly uh, midweek Bible study uh, here via Facebook Live. Hope everybody's doing good. Just wanted to say hello, and uh, we're excited about what God's doing, and uh, we're praying for you, and uh, continuing to lift up every family. I, I go back through and see many of you have watched these, and I pray that even though we're not here physically, we are together, and I pray that you're encouraged by the Word of God, and encouraged um, just knowing that we are still connected. I'm thankful for what God's doing, and uh, we're just going to keep praying one for another, and um, I believe God's answering prayers, put her great testimonies and things that God has already done, so we're thankful for that. <coughs> Amen. Um, we're going to begin tonight with prayer. We're just going to pray one for another. We're going to pray about this word we're about to receive, and just pray for our homes right now. So would you just join me in prayer? Jesus, we love you. We thank you for this privilege of gathering together today. We thank you for what you're doing, God, in our day, in this day, your strength, your sustaining power, God, your peace. I pray right now for each family that's gathered, those that will watch this, Lord, I just pray protection over them. We rebuke this virus in Jesus' name. We take authority over it. We pray protection in the hedge around each one. We ask you, God, to touch each family today, uh, grant the desires of their heart. If there's any sickness or any prayer requests, any situations, God, I just ask you to touch them today. Give them strength and encouragement. And again, I thank you for the privilege, God, of being able to come together. And uh, we just ask you to meet us today. Speak through your word is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. And if you have any prayer requests, just text them to me or my wife. Let us know. Uh, because we pray for you daily and your families. And uh, if you let us know how to pray specifically, we will definitely do that. Uh, I'm excited. Uh, this is a very different uh, time as we approach Easter, but I'm still excited about Easter. I'm excited about um, the message of Easter. We are planning on having a park and praise, weather permitting, uh, to celebrate our Easter service. We'll just have one service. On Sunday because of the holiday and we will uh, meet here if the weather cooperates for those that want to uh, we will park here in the parking lot uh, and those can, uh, the others park at your on your couch and in your home uh, and we're just gonna praise the Lord together on Easter Sunday celebration it'll be a great day um, it doesn't look like the weather's gonna be too good but we're praying and believing that God give us a window there so we're hopeful that that will happen one of the things i'm happy about or hoping about is because i would like to be able to celebrate communion on that day with us and those that are gathered in the parking lot will have everything prepared for that and um, so if we can do it we will do it um, but for those of you at home whether or not we have a park and praise service or we just have to do service via facebook live would like you church members to um, try your best to gather some great juicy crackers or something so that we could, at the end of that service, partake of communion together. I believe it'll be a special time. It's very different. We've never done it this way before. Even after the Lord put that in my heart, I saw others are going to try to do it as well. And um, so I just would encourage you uh, to, if you can, or if you go to the store between now and then, we'll try to tell people earlier, uh, gather those things. If you have any questions, text us, call us, let us know, and we'll let you know. I want to thank you for uh, remaining faithful in your giving during this time. You can give via our website, which is PentecostalsOfElDorado.com. That's PentecostalsOfElDorado.com. You can go to the bottom of the page, hit the Give Now button, and you can give securely and quickly. Uh, you can send it in the mail. You can text me or call me. I'll let you know how to do that, or we can make other arrangements. But I appreciate your faithfulness. Uh, God is providing for the needs of the church, and we're very, very thankful for that. Uh, tonight, because Sister Reno has got me on a clock, um, I don't know what she probably does, um, and really I just want to try to keep the preliminary short and get into the Word. Uh, I'm going to go to the Word of God tonight, so hopefully you've had time to join us, and it's welcome to everybody that's there. Uh, Exodus chapter 12 and verse 23 says, For the Lord will pass through the, to smite the Egyptians, 
And when he seeth the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite you. Tonight is actually Passover and most are in their houses, some observing Passover and others observing COVID-19. And most will stay in their house until the morning or even longer. Uh, in this passage, Israel was in their house because of the 10th plague, and we are in our houses, obviously, because of social distancing. They were protected if the blood was applied and they stayed in the house. Today, I'm thankful that the Lord protected them through the night, and I'm thankful that he continues to watch over us and protect us. I'm, thank you. I'm thankful there's power in his blood. I'm thankful for his protection. And these circumstances have forced us to stop our daily routines, to do some things different. However, our daily faith and our daily trust in God must not change because our God has not changed. Personally, I believe there's more to all of this. Uh, prophecies are coming true. Uh, we are closer, I believe, to the end than we have ever been before. Uh, look at how quickly things have changed. Uh, there's earthquakes in Idaho and other crazy places and other things. And while I believe the motives for social distancing is correct, and that's why we're trying to abide by it, I do believe it places us under the control, the guidance, the dependence of our government. And as I remember Passover and how the Lord passed over the houses covered by the blood of the Lamb, I'm thankful for our relationship with, the, with Jesus and his blood that washes us. Um, there is peace in my house, in this house, in my physical house tonight, because this is what I know. This is what I wholeheartedly believe. I believe whatever happens, the Lord is watching over us, protecting us, and nothing that he does not want to happen or won't allow to happen is going to happen. The devil had to go to Job to get permission to afflict him. Amen. And I believe that the Lord is blessing us. And so uh, Psalm 68 and 19 says, Blessed be the Lord, which daily loadeth us with benefits, even the God of our salvation. The Lord daily loadeth us with benefits. As we face some difficult days stuck inside our houses, don't lose focus, church. He still provides and he still protects his people today. The Lord has daily benefits. He loads us with salvation being the greatest. Thankful that I've been born again of water and spirit. The Amplified helps us with this verse, Psalm 68 and 19. It said, Blessed be the Lord who bears our burdens and carries us day by day. Even the God who is our salvation. One other version says, who is our support day by day. The psalmist declared that God who is our salvation will support us and carry us day by day. Literally, he carries our daily load or our burdens. That's why we can lay them at Jesus' feet. Isaiah 46 and 3 said, hearken unto me, O house of Jacob, and all the remnant of the house of Israel, which are born by me from the belly, which are carried from the womb, and even to your old age, I am he. Even to the hoary hairs will I carry you. He said, I have made you, and I will bear you. Even I will carry and will deliver you. I know that's a mouthful, but let's break it down for a minute. The Lord was saying each day, those from the belly, the womb, and all the way up until your old age, he's saying, I am he. Even I will carry you. I will, it doesn't matter if you're an infant, you're a toddler, you're a teenager, or you're an elder. He's, what he's saying is, from all those times through life, day by day through all of that, I am he. I'm the one that will carry you. 
I'm the one that will deliver you. I'm the one that will daily take care of you. From the belly to your old age, I am he. That's what Paul said, writing from prison. He said, this same God who takes care of me will supply all of your needs from his glorious riches, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. He said he takes care of me and he's going to take care of you. He supplies my needs and he's going to supply your needs. I am thankful tonight for the daily provision and care from the Lord. I'm thankful that he daily protects us. He daily provides for us. I, Isaiah record, hearken to me. Listen to me. I've carried you from the belly to your elder state. And I will continue to carry you and continue to deliver you. All we've got to do is trust him and serve him daily. Don't allow what's going on outside of our house, outside of our life, the circumstances, the trials, all of those. Don't allow that to affect the peace in your house. Not just your physical house, but this spiritual house. Because we're the temple of the Holy Ghost. Serve Him daily. Trust Him daily. Believe and trust Him to lead and to protect and to provide for you daily. See, this truth is seen in Israel as the Lord led them by day by a cloud and a pillar of fire at night. It's also seen as Israel takes their journey from Elam and they come into the wilderness of sin. Exodus chapter 16 and 2, the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. They murmured. And the children of Israel said unto them, Would to God we have died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt. When we sat by the flesh pots, when we did eat bread to the full. When we were there, we had all we wanted to eat. But you brought us forth into this wilderness to kill us, this whole assembly uh, with hunger. Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or no. Everyone's complaining. Something the children of Israel did a lot. Their complaint this time was about food. They murmured and pointed back to all the food they had in the land of Egypt where they were slaves, where they were bound, by the way. And they accused Moses and Aaron of bringing them into this wilderness to kill the whole assembly from hunger. See, but I believe today what the psalmist said. The psalmist said I believe the Lord orders the steps of the righteous. He orders their daily steps. He directs and guides their daily steps. I believe what David declared when he said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. In fact, David stated the same in Psalms uh, 37 when he said, trust in the Lord and do good. The result of trusting and doing good is that you will dwell in the land and verily or truly you will be fed. <clears throat> As we daily trust him, and do good. He provides daily what we need. Notice the Lord said to Moses, I'm going to rain bread from heaven for you. Every day, I'm going to rain it. And every day they're going to go out and they're going to gather a certain amount of what I provide for them on a daily basis. You know, he could have, he could have dumped it out in a month's slow. He could have dumped it down in a week's load. In fact, at first they tried to gather more than a day's rate and it turned to worms and rotted on them. He said, no, 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 I don't want you to get, I just want you to take what I supply for you today. And then tomorrow, you take and partake of what I supply for you tomorrow. Because every day, 
I'm going to provide for you. Every day, I'm going to show my power in your life. Every day, I'm going to rain bread from heaven. And then I'm going to use it to test you or prove you to see when I supply what you need, if you're going to walk according to my word. It was a daily test. He said, I'm doing this to prove daily whether they're going to walk in my law or not. God was telling him, I'm going to do my part. I'm going to provide daily for you. And then I'm going to do that to see if you will do your part. And by walking in my word, my law, daily. Amen. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about passing, daily passing the test. Daily passing the test. The question would be, what about us? Are we passing the daily test? Are we doing our part daily? Are we trusting Him? Are we walking according to His Word? Uh, are we doing our part while we trust Him to do His part? You say, Lord, help me, Lord, and provide here, and Lord, do this, and He will do that. But He does those things to prove whether or not those that put their trust in Him really will walk with Him. See, are we focused on the stale bread or the one who provides the bread? I believe God provides for us uh, daily. I believe He supplies all of our need according to His riches and glory. I believe He uses what He provides to prove to us like Israel and to see if we will walk daily according to His Word. You know, serving the Lord is a daily decision. Luke chapter 9 and 23, Jesus said to them all, If any man will come unto me, let him deny himself. And take up his cross daily and follow me. Jesus said, if any man desires to come after me, they must deny themselves and take up their cross daily, not just Sunday. Daily, not just Wednesday. Take it up daily and follow me. That's why Paul declared in 1 Corinthians 15, 31, I die daily. Because we must die to our will, our desires, and our flesh on a daily basis so we can take up our cross daily and follow Him and walk according to His Word. <clears throat> they followed Him daily in the book of Acts. Acts 2 and 46, they continued daily. They continued daily in unity because they were in one accord in the temple. In fellowship because they daily broke bread from house to house and daily they ate their meat with gladness and singleness of heart it was daily united daily fellowship daily gladness daily singleness of heart in acts 5 42 it was daily in the temple and in every house they ceased not to teach and preach jesus christ daily ministry Daily reaching, daily teaching, daily preaching. It was a daily activity. Church, let's not let this COVID-19 thing stop us from doing what God called us to do daily. Get on the phone and reach somebody. Get, 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 get on a, a website somewhere and teach a Bible study. Encourage somebody. Pray. Get in the Word of God. Do daily what we did while we were gathering. Let's continue to do it today because God's going to continue to prove Himself strong on our behalf. In the book, the book of Acts, church ceased not. They daily walked according to His Word and they shared it with others on a daily basis. That's God's will for our life. I believe He blesses and provides for us daily to prove us and see if we will walk daily according to His Word. Psalm 61 and 8 declares, So will I sing unto thy name forever, that I may daily perform my vows, my covenant. David said in verse 5, For thou, O God, hast heard my vows. That's why in verse 1 he says, Hear my cry, O God, and attend unto my prayer. He goes on to say, On the days my heart is overwhelmed, you've been my rock, you've been my shelter, you've been a strong tower from my enemy. That's why I believe David's daily resolve was found in verse 4 where he said, He abide in his tabernacle forever, and he would trust in the covering of his wings. That was David's daily desire. 
to be in his house, to be in his presence, to be under the covering of his. We just go read Psalms 91, 1 and 2. Amen. His desire was to abide under the shadow of the Almighty. David concludes Psalm 61 by saying, I sing praises daily or forever so that I may daily perform my vow. What's he saying? I got a melody in my heart. I got a song in my heart. Did you wake up with a song this morning? Will you go to bed with a song this morning? That song in my heart, that melody in my heart, it helps me to keep my daily commitment and covenant and vow with the Lord. Amen. It reminds me of the one who puts the melody in my heart. <clears throat> it was David's desire, and it must be our desire, to daily keep our vows to him. That's why there must be daily prayers. Psalms 86 and 3, be merciful unto me, O God, for I cry unto thee daily. Aren't you think what a privilege it is to daily cry out to him in prayer? Psalms 88 and 9 says, I have called daily upon thee. I have stretched out my hands unto thee. I've come to you daily. Jesus taught that men ought always to pray and not faint. Paul taught we pray without ceasing. Daily prayers help us pass the daily test. And just as the Lord rained down manna daily, day, Jesus said our prayers should include, uh, give us this day our daily bread. That should be our prayer. That should be the desire of our heart. Daily. Each day we should get into the book, into the good book, into the Holy Bible, and we should eat it. We should partake of it. We should let it get into our very fiber or DNA. We hide the word in our heart that we might not sin against him. That word is a lamp unto our feet. It is a light unto our path. It's this word that gives us direction on how to walk correctly and how to watch out uh, for things that we need to avoid daily. It's daily bread. It's consistent bread. It's needed to pass the daily test. The Lord rained down manna daily. They questioned the manna. They said, what is this? What is it? Sometimes we look at what God provides or what the day brings and we question it. COVID-19, really, Lord? Isolation, stay away from family, Lord, right? Really? Another day of this trial, another day with pain in my body. And sometimes we look around and we look at those things instead of daily looking to the one who will supply us the same as in that day. The manna which rained down daily was to prove or to test them daily to see if they would obey his word or not. Point is, sometimes we focus on the bread, the meal, the circumstances set before us instead of focusing on the one who provided it to us. He gave us this day. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let's rejoice and be glad. He gave us this day. And each and every day we need to wake up with that in our heart and daily say, you know what? Regardless of what the day brings, I know who's in control of the day. And I'm going to put my trust and my faith in I'm just going to walk obediently according to his word and my faith and trust in him. I'm going to trust him and do good. And he's going to help me dwell in the land and he's going to feed me. Why? Because he said he would take care of me. He told Moses, I'm going to rain down manna and I'm going to provide for them daily and then I'm going to prove them or test them and see if they're going to walk with me according to my word on a daily basis. He offers daily bread. He feeds us daily. But we need to understand the enemy's offering us bread too. But those that pass the test only by eating manna that daily bread, that word of God, are the ones that are blessed. It was Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, that conquered Jerusalem and brings Daniel's and others, Daniel and others into his palace. Daniel 1 and 5 said the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat. Notice the king, the enemy, if you would, 
offered them his food. But Daniel 1.8 says, Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the princes of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. He said, just give us 10 days. Let us eat only pulse and drink water for 10 days, and then let's see. They agreed, and the result was that their countenance appeared fairer and fatter in the flesh than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. The point is, don't replace what God gives us for what the enemy or the world would try to offer. Don't allow this present situation to replace your daily peace with fear and anxiety. Maintain your daily relationship with the Prince of Peace and allow His peace to continue to surpass all that you would understand. Don't replace what God's giving you on a daily basis, your faith in Him, your trust in Him, provision. Don't replace it for what the world or the enemy would offer. Don't let Him take your peace. Don't trade your peace for anxiety. Maintain the relationship and just trust God in the middle of it all. The Lord rained down manna daily to prove and test Israel. I want to pass the day with this. I want to, if this is not a Sunday and Sunday, Sunday and Wednesday thing, this is a daily walk. This is a daily walk. I want to pass the daily test. He loads us daily with benefits. I don't want to miss anything the Lord has prepared for and I believe that during this time, church, somebody listening to me right now, I believe God's prepared some things and, and you're already seeing some things, uh, some blessings, some understanding. I, I believe there's some things being imparted into you and your spirit as you're praying and seeking God, as you're pushing aside the plate. Uh, I, I believe God's giving you some things. Uh, he's showing you some things. Uh, he's strengthening you in some areas uh, because he's loading us daily with benefits. Sometimes, and I don't want to miss anything that God has for me, but sometimes allowing other things to get in the way and, and eating of other things and refusing to eat or partake of what God's given us on that day means we lose something he meant for us to have. Think about the beggar in the book of Acts. The Bible said he was daily in the temple. The beggar was positioned for his miracle. Inconsistency hinders our miracles. In Acts 8, uh, 3 2, they laid him daily at the gate of the temple. Every day they brought him there to beg and get some money. But what if the beggar decided to do his own thing? What if on that day he said, Nah, I'm just going to sleep in? I'm going to go check out another place and see what they have to offer. My desire is to show up and serve him daily and consistently. Especially now. Things are moving quickly. I really do believe he's coming soon. I really do believe our redemption is drawing nigh. I don't want the present circumstance or my daily trials to stop me from passing the test and missing my miracle. I have watched through the years as people have missed services and missed opportunities that God had for them. Because they stayed home or they walked in consistently, and it has affected them. I've watched that some have battled with a spirit of indifference, and I don't care attitude, and as a result, they miss out on what God desires to feed them. Let's focus on God daily. Let's rely upon God daily for provision and protection. It's a daily test to see if we're going to walk after the spirit or if we're going to fulfill the desire and the lusting of our flesh. How we walk daily matters. Consistency and consecration matters. We can't allow what's happening now to affect how we walk. I told you before, I'm going to preach to you like you're here. Okay, I'm, I'm going to encourage you to do what I can, but this is what God led in my heart. And I'm trying to encourage someone to make sure you're doing the right thing daily. See, don't allow what's going on right now to affect how you walk. And that's why we're taught to encourage one another daily. Hebrews 13, or 3 and 13 says, exhort one another daily while it is called today. 
Let sin him to be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Exhort, encourage one another daily today. I'm encouraged, I really am, by those that are reaching out and encouraging and contacting others, especially during this. We need that connection, church, and I commend you for doing it. I know many have. I've talked to people and they say, so-and-so called me and so-and-so brought me goodies. Thank you for doing that. Keep doing that. Why do we need to continue to encourage one another? Lest any of us become hardened. Lest we become affected by the deceitfulness of sin. Let something get in our hearts. See, we all need encouragement. And yes, I'm trying to encourage you today. And my encouragement is pass the daily test. Do what you need to do daily. Trust God. Trust Him and do good. Trust Him to provide a place to dwell. And trust Him to provide uh, food to feed you. The enemy's going to try to test you daily. Judges 16 and 16 records that Delilah pressed. The, the modern English version says nag Samson daily with her words and urged him so that his soul was vexed unto him. Our enemy is pressing us daily, nagging us if you would, with negative, critical, destructive words and thoughts. In Psalms 88 and 17, he said, they came round about me like daily like water. It just rose up like water all around me. They compassed me all together. His enemy, David, is saying, has pressed in and surrounded him daily. But my point is that we are in a daily fight, but it is a fight we can win because greater is he that's in us uh, than he that's in the world. But we're going to win the daily fight uh, when we pass the daily test. Psalms 56 and 1 said, Be merciful unto me, O God, for man would swallow me up. He fighteth daily, oppressing me. Be merciful, God, because man would try to swallow me up. He's fighting daily to oppress me. That's why I need you to be merciful, God. And aren't you thankful for his mercy? Jeremiah, the weeping prophet, wrote in Lamentations chapter 3, Verse number 22, he said, It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. His compassions, his loves that do not fail, they are new every morning. They're new every day. And great is thy faithfulness. His mercy, saints, are new every morning. Every day there's mercy. You slipped, you fall, you allow the enemy to get in, something's happened. Just get back up and reach out and say like they be merciful to me, oh God. Because his mercies, his mercy is new every day. Great is his faithfulness. He's faithful every day. But he requires faithfulness from his servants. Psalms 42 and 10 and 11 says, As with a sword in my bones, my enemy reproached me, while they say daily unto me, Where is thy God? They're poking me, they're prodding me, they're attacking me, and then they're saying, Where's God? Where's your God to protect you? Where is he? They said, My enemies, they keep placing these questions in my mind daily. They're jabbing me with their sword and with their words and Daily the enemy's asking, where is he? Why hasn't he showed up yet? Verse 11, why art thou cast down, my soul? Why art thou disquieted within me? But then David gives the answer. He says, hope thou in God. Yes, I know they're poking you. Yes, I know they're attacking you. Yes, I know there's questions and things you don't understand. And you're on a soul. Why are you cast down? And why what's going on within you not all right? But don't worry. Just put your hope thou in God. Have hope against hope daily. Trust Him. Place your faith, your hope in Him daily. Don't allow what you're facing to hinder the relationship of who you're serving daily. David continues, that's why I praise him. 
For yet, he says, shall I praise him. Notice it's yet shall I praise him. Despite the question, despite the pressure, I'm going to praise him. I'm going to exalt in the middle of the day when I don't understand it all. All I know is that I'm trying my best to walk according to his word and pass the test. And all I know is I'm just going to trust him. I'm going to praise him. Yet, in the middle of it all, I'm going to give him the praise he's worthy of. Why? He goes on to say, because he is the health of my countenance. He's my healer. He's the one that gives strength in my body. And he is my God. My, not just your God. He's my God. I'm going to serve him daily because he's my God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Are you thankful? Come on, just praise the Lord for a minute. Just thank Him for a minute. Just say, Lord, I thank you. I want to pass the test. What a privilege it is to walk daily with you, God. You are my God. I'm going to serve you. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Jeremiah said in Lamentations 3 and 23, This I recall to my mind. This is what I remember. With everything going on, the weeping prophet would say, this is what I bring back to my memory. This is what I recall. This is what I remember. His compassions fail not. I remember. I bring back to my mind. His mercies are new every morning, every day. As a result of remembering, he said, that's why I have hope. I'm remembering it. I'm recalling it. Church, every day, I don't know what you're facing. I don't know what you're going through, but recall it to your mind today. I'm trying to bring it back to your memory today. Come on. This is the day the Lord hath made. Uh, this is, just serve Him. He's your God. Put your faith, your hope in Him. The message of my heart is just have hope in the God you serve daily. Recall to your mind His Word. His promises. Remember, David said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Have hope today. I'm trying to encourage you, have hope today. He provides daily bread. He will protect and shelter us daily. There's never a day when he will forsake or leave us. He's always with us. That's why we can cast our cares and our concerns upon him today and every day because he is concerned and he cares about us. The encouragement is just keep passing the test by trusting him and doing good. Verily thou shalt be fed. He'll feed you. He'll take care of you. Amen. Just as he provided for Israel. He said, I'm going to give them what they need daily. Not weekly, not monthly, but daily. Because I want to see if they're going to serve me daily. If they're going to put their faith in me daily. If they're going to walk according to my commandments daily. Oh, that's my desire, folks. That's my desire. That's my encouragement. Just keep put one foot in front of the other. Just keep your hope in the Lord. Just keep trusting Him and doing good. And He's going to bring you through. And He's going to bless you and strengthen you. The truth is, with all this going on, God has truly blessed me. God has provided. He's done things it's like, wow, wow, God, in the middle of all of this. You know why? Because He's proving and He's taking care of those that will daily walk with Him. He's doing it for you, I know. And I believe He's going to continue to do it. Just do what David said. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Just commit daily to Him. Trust also in Him and He'll bring it to pass. He'll bring it to pass. If you just daily pass the test. Hallelujah. I've given you tonight the Lord laid upon my heart. I pray that it would be a blessing and encouragement to you tonight. I love you very much. Church, I'm praying for you. I know there are people that are not necessarily members of this church, but when I see your name upon that, I'm praying for you. Count me part of the church. If we can help you, just, just inbox us or message us or send us a text. You go to our website and get my contact information and call me, text me, email me. I just want you to know today that God is with us and he's, he's seen us through each and every day. 
Just continue to prove Him. Just continue to walk with Him. Commit your way to Him. Trust also in Him. And He will bring it to pass. Lord Jesus, I thank you for your word today. I thank you for this time to my brothers and my sisters, those that are joining us. I pray this word has encouraged you. I pray it's challenged us and helped us to evaluate our daily walk. But I hope it's also challenged and encouraged us to understand that every day you're providing for us. And we just need to trust you with it and walk with it. God, I pray you encourage uh, the body today and encourage us and help us. I thank you for dear brothers and sisters today. God, I know that things are not easy and this is difficult and there's a lot going on. But I know you're in control. We have complete trust in you. And as we trust you, we're just going to continue to walk according to your word. We're just going to continue to do what's good and right in your sight. And I know that you're daily going to provide for us. And you're daily going to feed us. We love you tonight. We ask you, God, to bless us and keep us. Put a hedge round about each one. Protect us. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you tonight. We love you. As I said, tonight's the Passover. As you're in your home tonight, just think about that. The Lord protected those that had the blood applied. They protected them. He was with them. Amen. And I'm so thankful today for the blood. I'm so thankful, hallelujah, for his protection. Amen. And his deliverance. God bless you. We love you. I'll see you Sunday. God bless. In Jesus' name.